Evening, it's nice seeing the sun coming through the window. Yeah. All right. Item 49, we are going to open with a public hearing on the mineral extraction ordinance. First reading. So that's opening at 603. We'll welcome uh, any residents or community members to come to the podium. So uh, I'm sorry, I yeah. thought you might have coordinated with uh, with Roy. No, I, I, I was wondering if we could put uh, Dawn in first. Can yeah. we do that? Or, or at next, maybe? No, not that Dawn Holland. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, he was here to discuss, and he had some questions that he wanted to ask him regarding the water. This district. one. Yeah, oh, this one. So they, yeah. Not, um, okay, so we're skipping down to Sorry. item 28. It's okay. Yes. Yeah. 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 Don would come up to the podium. All right. All right. We're going to skip down to item 28, consideration of recommendations from the appointments committee, because we currently have one of the applicants for the Winthrop Utilities District Board of Trustees here in attendance. Don Holly. Hello. Thank you for Hi, Don. How are you? I'm good. Andy. I'm good. good. Uh, even Landy would like to know if, if should the time ever come when we need to discuss an expansion of the uh, sewer and water lines, if you're at least amenable to having a discussion about that. Absolutely. Okay. To expansion at all. Oh, I'm good then. I would add that uh, I wouldn't. Put it on the backs of our current ratepayers. You know, it would have to be paid for by the project. That yeah. that's fine. That, that that was my only question. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Thanks. Since we're on item twenty-eight. What's that? Well, we have to. Uh, yeah, I wanted to open this this uh, this uh, utilities district board of trustees uh, and. The, uh, up for discussion amongst the councils. There was some input as uh, uh, some people had some questions. I'd just like to open that one up. But I have, I'm prepared for other appointments, but like to get some input from other councils. Anybody have any input in regards to just in regards to uh, just the winter utility or well, it's, it's the appointments yes. that are going to be. Uh, Multiple appointments between Roger, Roger Hansen, Don. Yeah. And now, Don, you're reappointed, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Larry. And how many seats? We have this one and then reappointment two and two, two new appointments to fill one seat. Okay. Two new uh, candidates to fill one seat. Oh, okay. The team was being withdrew. Yeah. Yeah. Carrie yeah, Gary withdrew as well. Yeah. The only thing is, I, I think in the town uh, ordinance, it says that they're supposed, their terms are supposed to be staggered one year apart. And I know there was some adjusting that had to be done when I left your job a couple years back. Are they staggered? It, it, are they know. staggered currently? I mean, is, are we doing an appointment for somebody else? Utilities district appointees. Uh, there, the there, other there three seats. Three seats, two seats Roger, there, there, there. Yeah, so his, his term expires. It's on a full term. Right, okay. At that point, they'd have to be reappointed every two years. Yeah. I had a hunt for it, and then I found that I realized it's supposed to be every staggered. So they're a year apart, every one of them. Yeah. So there's two. Hold on here. I think even if Don will remember at one point, I had there's asked him Carrie to Huff, change. there's Larry Merrifield, and Roger Hansen, correct? Yes, correct? Those are the three. Yeah. And then Don Holly would be a reappointment. reappointment. So there's two 
Out of those three candidates, there's two positions. I think Carrie would do. I don't think Carrie would have scared that. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm going to speak up. So are you presenting a recommendation to the council this evening? Well, I was looking for some input from other individuals. I'm good. I'm not okay. And they definitely all. Yeah, I'm I'm good with the two other uh, candidates. Well, there's two other candidates. There's one position, like one on Senate recommendation. I thought you just said there are two positions. There's, there are two seats available. There are three candidates, one of whom okay, so is there's already two. served. Okay. One is a reappointment. Yeah, right. You went with a reappointment and there was one seat, but you don't approve the reappointment and it's two seats. Right. Okay. I'm I'm good with any one of them. <laughs> I mean, I'm, you know. And Carrie Hub is withdrawn as well. I would have told if Carrie she, she is not here, but I think that's the chair. Okay. Yes, that's what I was told. Then we don't have a lot of options anyway. What's that? Then yeah. we don't have a lot of options anyway. It's gone in this seat. That would be the best. It's an easy one. Yep. We both seem accurate. Uh, now, Roger was on the zoning board for years. I worked yeah, with him. Yeah. He'll be an excellent board member over here. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, Roy has to name the three candidates on the Google. Mm -hmm. I have to name the three. You got to make a motion or tell us that you okay. want to. Yeah, recommendations to the recommendation. Council. There you go. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> I'm going to recommend uh, the. I'm going to recommend Larry Merrifield and Roger Hansen for the as appointments for the appeals board. Yep, for the for the utilities uh, district. Utilities district. Sorry, doing this all. Are we going to do Michael Deming for the zoning board of appeals? Well, could we? No, I'm, I'm going to pass. For that. Well, so how do I? How do I? What do I say? Board, you want to appoint Rick Dory? I want to reappoint Rick Dory. Organization programs or committees. So, so I might say, let's just like do this one at a time, starting with the water utilities board. It's in one item. Mm -hmm. So you have to break it up. Break it up. So, all right. Uh, the two appointments. Larry Merrifield, Roger Hanson. Well, you do get them separately, I believe. Oh, because if you move to a point. I move to appoint Larry, Larry, Larry first. And Roger Hanson to, to the utilities district. We have trustees. Board of trustees. There we go. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second for Larry Fitzgerald and Roger Hanson to meet with their utilities. Excuse me. So that's yeah. Roger Hanson to the Winter Utilities District Board of Trustees. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All in favor? So that means Dawn and Holly out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would also like to appoint, he's not on here. The Matthew Netto is not on here, but he was a new appointment. Can I read? Can I, for the revitalization committee, he's not on our agenda, but can I appoint him if he's not on our agenda? This was taken, this was an item from a previous agenda, item 28, coffee from a previous agenda. Because we, we tabled it. So I'm wondering, he he didn't make it on this agenda, but can I appoint him? I would say chair's discretion. Yes. I would like to appoint Matthew Netto to the Village Revitalization Committee. I'll second. All in favor? All in favor? And yeah, I don't know where you can win. Yeah, I mean, we, we had talked about uh, not 
appoint not doing any appointments on the zoning board of appeals. We can we can table that. Table that. Okay. okay. Motion. Uh, I move to uh, table the appointment for the uh, tax assessment zoning board. Zoning board. Zoning board. Yes. Appeals yes. board. Yeah. Second. All in favor to table the zoning board of appeals. I would like to know why. Not that I'm unamendable to it, but what's that? Well, we're going to table that one. Why? Yeah. Because uh, I had, had had some discussions, and based on the uh, based on the uh, application, the input that I've had, uh, I the committee like, chairperson's decision. Good no, enough. Good enough. <laughs> okay, I think that sums it up for item twenty-eight. Okay. Turning around and going back to item five zero. Public hearing of the mineral extraction ordinance first meeting. We will open the public hearing at 6 13. And we'll welcome Don Emerson, our planner. Hello? Nope. Don Emerson, Limber Town Planner. Uh, just give you an overview of what's happened in the last yeah. year. In March of 2023, the council initiated a moratorium on mineral extraction ordinances. Uh, it resulted as an uh, application that had come at that time. There is no pending application at this time. We're just talking about mineral extraction ordinance and anything that may come forward after that. So the, the moratorium actually expired um, in March, it has expired. However, I worked with the town council, the town attorney, and there is language in the draft ordinance that was posted to the public and that you have that makes the ordinance retroactive. So should an application come in, it would still be under this ordinance when the council adopts it in whatever form that may be. Thank so, you, Michael. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on. I want to make sure people can hear. Yeah. It wasn't when it yeah. up there. Don Paul. Uh, there we go. Uh, we could we could blame him. Do you want me to back off at all or just keep going? No, I keep going. I'm okay with that. I want to make sure that everybody was good could hear you with Zoom and I'll hear you on Yep. So last thing I was just mentioning was that the moratorium date of expiration has actually gone by, but we've worked with the town attorney to make sure that that gap is covered by some language in the draft ordinance. And it's also identified in the memo that went with the ordinance to this evening and posted online. So after the council instituted the moratorium a year ago, the Kennebec Valley Council of Government worked with the county board. They came up with a draft uh, ordinance to start reviewing, which is an album of different communities that they had looked at. And the plenty board workshop that draft at multiple meetings. And at different points, they took public input informally and informally. So there was some discussion at meetings, and then there was formally noticed public hearings where people spoke as well. So there, I'd say there was a little give and take on that, and I hope you'll all support that point. So the final draft is before you this evening. I'm happy to answer any questions on it. I do want to make a note that it was brought to my attention just this evening, but there, that there is a Scrivener's error that was already identified at the last plenty board meeting where they discussed this on page 23. H, there was a measurement that was that was supposed to be identified at the end of that sentence, um, measured at 300 feet from the blast site. And that was a point that the planning board was discussing at that meeting. And I was to follow up to the planning board members to make sure that it got worded correctly. And as a result of that, it got omitted. It's just a scrivener's error. It was not intended to be taken out. So I would recommend that the board, that the council consider adopting this language as recommended by the planning board and to repost the, the item with that change for the second meeting. Questions or comments from the council? Is that, is that recorded as it in from that planning board meeting? So this will be amended. Is it recorded? 
to make sure that the planning board is that what they they approve that verbiage yeah. uh, for letter H on page. Yep, yeah, I can go back that and look at the records and the the notes, but it it I do recall from memory and it should be reported that that was the place. Yeah. I just want to make sure before we vote on it that yeah. that is actually here and you know concrete and ink and everything. So. So make sure that that's yeah, and, and so keep in mind this is a first of two readings, and so this is sort of preliminary approval, if you will. And if any changes are made, then we will repost the the ordinance with any changes that that might be suggested. I just want to say I, I read this back in front, forward, and backwards, and I looked it all over, and I think it's very well done. I mean, it looked really good to me. I didn't miss that piece of it because I didn't listen to meetings, but. I like everything that they put in there. Uh, I listened to a couple of constituents that sent me some emails. They they liked the way it was written, especially some neighbors that are at a, maybe a potential site. So uh, I'm comfortable <clears throat> moving forward with this, this um, ordinance. So thank you. Make uh, a motion. Uh, I've heard from uh, a constituent this morning, Steve McDermott. I think he's here. Um, if you could come up. Possibly, if I could uh, ask you to speak about the aquifer. Um, protection overlay zone. Hi, good evening, Steve McDermott. Uh, one of the, what I just, what uh, Councilor Burns was referencing is in the initial draft submitted by KB Cog, there's a reference to an aquifer overlay, aquifer protection overlay district, which we don't have. But it gives what that language did was gave protection to unknown or mapped aquifers. What Winther does have is a groundwater protection ordinance from 1985 that was recently found by Don uh, doing some digging. And that was removed from the KB contract. It's no longer in there and required a groundwater analysis for any activities that would be near a known or mapped aquifer. What there is is a stream protection resource area in the rural district the only district where uh, mineral extraction activities are allowed, and a map aquifer uh, as identified the main IFWs beginning with Habitat Program. So one of the things I pointed out and at a, a planning board meeting was, if we know there's a map aquifer that impacts groundwater drinking and wells, should we maintain the language from the KBCON uh, draft document, but rename it in a way that addresses and is responsive to our zoning or existing ordinances to protect aquifers. Thank you. I'd like to see a provision that gives in regards to that. Uh, I think the protection of the drinking water in that area is paramount, and mm -hmm. any unnecessary yep. drilling and blasting <laughs> can have an adverse effect on that. Thank you very much, Steve. I got something. Okay. There's at least two occasions here where, um, and the one I just happened to look at is on page 27, section three. It says, upon inspection by the CEO or their designee, uh, the code enforcement officer is the only person um, in this town that's authorized to enforce the ordinance. You cannot just decide to designate Bob Smith to go look and make a decision. He can hire consultants, whatever, and go out there and he can get their opinion. But the code enforcement officer makes the final decision. That's a matter of law. So I'm re I won't vote for this unless this their designee thing is uh, taken out. Yes. I think the intention of that language is that the code enforcement officer could use a consultant, could use a third party. And that the code enforcement officer would still oversee and make the final decision, but they could use someone who has more expertise in whatever that area may be, if it's air quality or sound. But it doesn't take away from the fact that the code enforcement officer is the ultimate decision maker. So maybe the language just needs to be clarified because I don't believe the intent was for him to pass on the ability I, to do that. To say without, I would appreciate a clarification. That would be good. Just probably just say without delegated authority. Okay, so I use consultant. Yeah. So the way I'm reading that, uh, it doesn't sound like the CEO or the designee would have any sort of uh, authority. It's simply that they would be the one who would then report to the town council planning board and approved owner operator uh, what was found during the inspection. 
uh, and then the the owner operator would have 30 days to remedy any de any deficiency. So, um, so, so it, it looks to me like in that sense, the CEO or their designee would be just um, reporting to a to a higher body that would then uh, ask the uh, the owner to remedy the situation. Well, but if we need to clarify that, we could. I mean, I mean, in theory, maybe you would want Don or someone that could be to assess planning as a planner. So, I'm you know, planning board and that maybe we'd have, I mean, that might be a situation where I could see the CEO saying, the Don can go look at this. Yeah. I I, I actually don't think that that's an appropriate role for the planner in this, because at this point you're talking about enforcement of the ordinance and, and the planner's job is simply to come up with the ordinance. So yeah, sorry, um, I'm thinking the same as to Don's point, just be using a consultant to come in to have more expertise to mm -hmm. uh, weigh in on what they, the findings might be. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I, that's all I'm really asking. You know, if, if the, um, code enforcement officer decides this is something, you know, beyond his experience or expertise. He's able to uh, say hire a consultant, uh, you know, and bring that consultant in, take that consultant's opinion, put it together with his own, and make a final decision. Okay, he can't just designate somebody to go out there and make a decision. The code enforcement officer has to make the decision. Yeah, but I don't think that's the intent. Well, may not, but it could be yeah, used that sound, way. Yeah, it does sound right. Like I think just so that's just, it it's an easy change. Yeah. And then I'm good with this. Thank you, Don. Thank so, you. So with these, forgive me, I was trying to get understanding of where we go from here. With it, we've got two more amendments. Should we, should we have to have those amended before we say green or we can say green for those two amendments? Pending, and then do the final reading. Yeah, and, and that's part of what this process is for, is to gather any input that may lead to some tweaks or adjustments to the to the ordinance. So what will happen now is Don will take what's been said here, incorporate it into the ordinance for the second reading. At that point, if you're comfortable with it, then you can finally approve the, the ordinance. If I could just summarize what I heard to make sure moving forward, I actually had three notes. One was adding language in from the original KB Cog draft ordinance to protect the groundwater, referencing the aquifers. Um, talking about that Scrivener's there, it's not actually an amendment, but the language would be changed from what you have in front of you uh, regarding the blasting area, the measurement from the blasting area. And then the last one being what you discussed about the CEO and clarifying that language in terms of him being able to designate, him or her being able to designate someone else. Or hire a consultant. Mm -hmm. yeah, but they're still in the Thank you. Oh, page 10, page 27, Don. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I also uh, received yes, some emails uh, of support. I did receive one from Matt Kellen uh, in support of this, expressing that. And then we also have Bill Suzy in the audience tonight who wants to uh, read a letter of support. Well, first of all, folks, thank you very much for, uh, for being here with us tonight. Um, I personally want to thank all of you for your support during these past 560 days. It's been uh, it's been that long since the planning board first took up the application quarry for a quarry in Winthrop. A lot of water has gone under the bridge and over the bridge since then, uh, the wet spring we've been having. Uh, though this process had the occasional uh, contentiousness at times, our group of over 600 citizens has strived to maintain a disciplined and convivial approach to our comments and suggestions to the planning board. By doing so, the favor has been returned. And I, for one, have the utmost of respect for what these residents do as part of their duties. It was not easy, it was complicated, but somehow we get to the other end of it. The Min Mineral Extraction Ordinance incorporates many of our requests and interests but mostly it respects the residents' health and welfare. This was our number one objective from day one, protect our homes, water, air quality, and health. This document goes a long way in achieving this goal. Did we get everything we asked for? No. Can we live with what's being proposed? Yes. Is it still possible to run a mineral extraction operation in Winthrop with these guidelines? Absolutely. 
if at any point in the future we realize that we missed something egregious or that there's a loophole in the ordinance, I'm convinced that this town council will respond appropriately and correct any oversight this ordinance might have missed. As such, I fully endorse this mineral extraction ordinance with the changes that we've mentioned tonight and will urge our fellow residents to do the same. I thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, Gil. I want to thank Donna Planner, Gil, the residents and planning board for contributing. Do we have anything else from the council or residents? Yeah. Okay. I I think uh, thank you from the council is called for because this did get a little contentious, but it did not get out of hand. And everyone stayed reasonable. All of our citizens spoke, uh, for lack of a better word, quietly and, and tried to present solid facts to us without getting excited, carried away. They made their points, and those points went home because of the way they were presented. So thank you very much. Well said, Andy. So at this time, uh, the chair will entertain a motion with those amendments as noted. Second. All right, all in favor? All in favor. Thank you. All right, moving on to item 51, we will open a public hearing regarding the table franchise agreement for effective renewal at 629. I'm actually going to close out the previous public hearing at 622. Um, the franchise agreement contract visual. And so I believe that I did get some questions regarding this, uh, such as how many subscribers pay franchise fee, what is the total amount of franchise fees collected from Winthrop subscribers in a year, so does that amount collected match up with the amount received by the town, and how can we verify? And I did receive an email in response that all Winthrop Spectrum video subscribers pay franchise Franchise fees as outlined in the franchise agreement, meaning in the town of Winthrop, the town has elected to impose a $5, 5% franchise fee. It's collected from the Winthrop video customers monthly and paid back to the town annually. Uh, we also have a letter that was accompanied, uh, that was mailed to the town for a check in January of 2024, and uh, an itemized breakdown by services and gross revenues. Um, do we have any questions? From the council regarding this franchise renewal agreement. No, I'm good to go. Okay. I'm assuming Anthony, you've been negotiating back and forth with these guys. Yeah, that, that's correct. It's pretty much a boilerplate contract. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty standard. Um, you know, one thing I will say because we get a lot of questions about actually the, the way that this all came up was that uh, we had a citizen approach us and he was upset with the rates that he was being charged for for cable. And I told him that the franchise agreement really didn't regulate those rates, although there is a clause in here that allows municipalities to do so uh, to the extent that is allowed by the law. But the law does not currently allow it. It's just uh, written in there just in case the law should change. But uh, but anyway, so it sent a, he wanted to see the franchise agreement nonetheless. So it sent a scurry to try to find it. And uh, our executive assistant found uh, a copy from 1993 and thought, surely this is not it. As it turns out, that was it, and so we figured it's probably time to update the agreement. And this and this this contract does have a, a fifteen year term, and so they were agreeable to changing some of the things in there that we thought were a tad and What were the changes? Oh, it, you know, it was things like they wanted us to post notice of these public hearings and so forth in the newspaper, which I think is, as a former newspaper man, I think it's it's not the best way to reach your audience, and it's awfully expensive too. Um, they also had some uh, uh, language in there about uh, wanting to uh, alert them every time there was an address change, but that was only for annex land, and we're never going to annex any land because all the land around this is already spoken for. So it was just little uh, niggling things like that. That they also did allow us, uh, one other thing I, I do want to mention is they also did allow us to offset the cost of cable service to some of our facilities. So we do get cable services at our ambulance, police, and fire stations, because that's important depending upon what's going on 
in the news at the time, and then also at the middle school and the grade school. So the previous contract had different facilities, different addresses. And so this was also allowed us a way to clean up that stuff. Thank you, Martin. Move to approve the renewal of the cable franchise agreement. You haven't closed the, the public hearing right. yet. Oh, what? Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. So if there's no further questions or comments, we will close the public hearing at 633. And so item 52, consideration of renewing the cable franchise agreement between the town of Winthrop, Maine and Spectrum Northeast LLC, an indirect subsidiary of Carter Communications. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion. Second. <laughs> okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve the renewal. I'd like to make a motion to approve the renewal of the cable franchise agreement between the town of Winthrop, Maine, and Spectrum Northeast LLC, an indirect subsidiary of Charter Communications as presented. It should be the Charter Communications. <laughs> yep, it should be. I'll second that motion. All in favor? All in favor? Okay. Yeah. All right, moving on to item 50, discussion and consideration of the updated comprehensive plan. Uh, I have also since received some grammatical changes from the comprehensive planning committee. Uh, I will send those out respectively to the council. Um, and then also an update to one of the um, paragraphs that we will um, revise and review and revise as well. Uh, at this time, I believe we also have uh, Kate Cog, uh, Jessica Cobb from the Kennebec Valley Council of Governments uh, here to present an overview. Not me this time. Okay. Hey, everybody, thank you for coming out for this tonight. Um, this is a brief overview of Winthrop's comprehensive plan update. This is a vision statement that was a collaborative effort between the comprehensive plan committee and the uh, members of other committees, as well as residents. Give you a second to read it. For the Zoom audience, Jessica, why don't you go ahead and read it? Winthrop will strive to sustainably provide a healthy mix of choices for, of, for living, learning, working, and playing in a community that embraces people fully being their genuine selves. Winthrop will pursue all this with an eye towards preserving a new, unique sense of place created by the town's rural flavor, its inviting village, and its elemental natural beauty. What is a comprehensive plan? So essentially, it's a guiding document for the town in the direction forward that its residents want to see it go. It's an analysis of current trends, issues, and needs, along with recommendations for areas of improvement. It's not simply a response to state requirements rather than to the community's own needs, nor is it an ordinance a set of rules or regulations. And it's not a dust collector that just sits on the shelf. If I can add a comment to that, I think the best description I heard of comprehensive plans came from Jessica's boss, Joel Greenwood, who said that comprehensive plans are meant to be aspirational as 
opposed to regulatory. So as Jessica mentioned, this is not seeking to impose any sort of regulation on the community. It's to give us a roadmap of where the community would like to be in 10 years, what do we aspire to be? And I, I thought that was a really good and succinct way of, uh, of Joel uh, in describing that. Yes, Joel has lots of experience with comprehensive plans and a succinct way of putting things. History of comprehensive plans. Um, basically, under the Growth Management Act of 1988, comprehensive plans have become required by the state law. This law stated an explicit goal to address, un, to address unchecked growth and development sprawl, which was beginning to outpace local capacity for services. While there is no penalty for towns that don't have a comprehensive plan, there is a lot of incentives to have one. Next slide. So in short, Towns with a state approved plan receive priority consideration for certain grants and other, other funding options. But there's other benefits as well as financial as, for example, regulatory benefits. Um, you can enact legitimate zoning impact fees and rate of growth ordinances. Um, there's a list of others. Qualify for relaxed main DOT traffic permit standards for certain growth area development. Anthony? Yeah, and so while we could see some grants that we might not otherwise see, I wouldn't want anyone to think that that's the primary purpose of this document. The primary purpose of this document, as Jessica said, is to give us some guidance on where we want the community to go. And so that's where all the policies and strategies in there are really uh, important so that we can start working towards uh, some of the things that will help us get to to where we hope to be in, in 10 years. So that's the primary purpose for that. I, I consider the fact that we can see some grant funding as sort of a, uh, a secondary benefit. I would agree with that. It's a matter of checks and balances. More benefits of a comp plan. They're broad and they cover a vast array of topic areas. Because of that, they don't go into depth on any one topic area in any real measure, like a specific plan would, for example, for open space or a downtown revitalization plan. It's an overview and an analysis of an array of topics, in short. So these are the chapters that are mandated by the Growth Management Act. Yeah, and I'll just add to that. I think the, in my mind, at least the three most important chapters in this are the future land use, because that's going to determine the planning that will go involved for how we want the community to develop. Housing, which we know is a huge issue that we've talked about many, many times here and we'll continue to talk about. And then also just because of the unique place that Winthrop is natural resources. So we're blessed with 11 lakes. And so what do we need to do in order to be good caretakers of those lakes? It's interesting. In each town I work with, housing is always, housing and future land use tend to always be hot topic chapters. But each town does have its, its own chapters that really stand out and are unique to that town. So the focus areas that we'll discuss here tonight will be future land use and the policies and strategies, which Anthony already touched on. The policies and strategies, this is a table. This table is a way to have strong goals for the community that can shape municipal activities and community engagement. Associated policies and strategies are created to achieve desired outcomes and track implementation success. Yeah, and so, We've all heard the acronym for goals, uh, for goals is SMART goals, uh, specific, me measurable, achievable, relevant, and then time-oriented. And that's what policies and strategies are. They, they serve as sort of milestones for if we're actually making progress uh, with the recommendations that are made in the plan. And the other 
one that we'll cover tonight will be the future land use. The future land use chapter gives an understanding of how the built environment, <clears throat> excuse me, interacts with the natural system. It also describes where growth is desired and will be directed. The future land use plan is an evaluation of growth and current land use trends and regulations. It considers where growth should logically be directed to be the most cost effective to the town and preserve natural resources, essentially. What does a future land use plan do? Essentially, it's, it's made up by decisions of residents. It identifies fiscally and environmentally appropriate areas for growth and investment. These three points highlighted here in the box on the left are the essence of a future land use plan. So it offers prudent future land use choices that can balance additional growth, preserve the essential community character, and protect natural resources. And it designates areas where future development should be encouraged and where it should be discouraged, which is an essential element to preserving natural resources, agricultural land, and open space while promoting a thriving town. Yeah, and so that last bullet speaks to the designated growth area that we had lots of discussion and debate about. With a lot of help from Pat Lang. This was a 2010 comprehensive plan future land use map. It included some of this area was never, it was a suggested expansion that was never fully adopted for a variety of reasons. This is the 2024 future land use map. And it includes thoughtful expansion of the designated growth areas as determined through joint effort of municipal staff, residents, and the planning board. This is where I was gonna give Pat Ladd a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so goals, policies, and strategies. Every town plan must contain the state goal, state policies, and state strategies associated with the certain chapters. However, the town can include additional goals, policies, and strategies as well. And Winthrop did for each and every chapter, they included well thought out policies and strategies as well as an implementation plan. So these policies and strategies were determined jointly by the comp plan committee, various boards and committees, and town officials. So a goal is an intention, an overarching objective for which a community is striving. A policy is a specific statement of principle or course of action concerning how to reach a goal. A strategy describes how policies will be put into action. An implementation strategy specifically describes the action to be taken, assigns responsibility, and establishes a schedule and priorities for carrying out the action. The strategy breaks down the minutia of how who and when the actions are taken. Yeah, and so this is gonna be really important. Uh, part of this will be creating that standing comprehensive plan implementation committee, a body that's going to hold both the appointed and the elected officials accountable for making sure that they're uh, addressing in some form or fashion each one of those policies and strategies. And as Anthony said, appointing the Comprehensive Plan Implementation Committee is quite possibly the biggest chain, change from the 2010 plan. There was no checks and balances. There was no way to ensure that anything, any follow through or any consistency was done in implementing anything with the previous comp plan. So I think having a standing comp plan implementation committee is an excellent way to ensure things get done. Yeah. Does anybody uh, have any questions? Yeah, I I just had a comment. Okay. As part of the 2010 comprehensive plan, and we did in fact recognize a need for, um, you know, a committee to push things along. And uh, we did for several years hold the committee together but there's no real support for it. 
it wasn't an official position. It's so difficult to get volunteers. Yeah, right? well, you know, on the one hand, I'm concerned that implementation committee will kind of tend to use the comprehensive plan as an ordinance. On the other hand, I know we need the implementation committee if we're going to recognize what the town's wishes are and keep, keep you know, our board committees going in the right direction. I understand that makes sense. So, um, so, so let me let me offer a, sort of another viewpoint of that, Andy, and that is that um, where I live in Belgrade, there's a comprehensive plan implementation committee. I actually serve as the chair of that committee currently. But over the past, and so we're now in the process that Winthrop was in, you know, maybe a year or so ago, where we're just starting to work with KB Cog to rewrite the or update the comprehensive plan. And when we went back through the 2013 plan, everyone was really encouraged by the amount of stuff that managed to get done in that plan. And that was, I attribute that directly to the fact that there was a body that was holding both the town officials elected and appointed accountable for ensuring that progress was being made. And they met every month and they would take a specific chapter and then they would have whomever was responsible for implementing those policies and strategies available to them and ask them some really pointed questions about where are we on this and, and what are the roadblocks and how can we uh, move forward with some of these things. And if not for that, then I think that plan probably would have become the dust collector that uh, Jessica described a little earlier. I think so, we kind of said the same thing. <laughs> I, I, we need an, uh, an implementation committee. That's absolutely. You know, and one of the things, don't, don't be, don't mistake the fact that it's unlikely. It's unlikely that everything in this plan will actually get done. And sometimes there's a good reason for that. I know with uh, the plan in Belgrade, we got to a point with some of those things where we realized, you know, this isn't really realistic or this isn't a priority. It sounded like a good idea at the time, but once we tried to actually put it in practice, it wasn't such a great idea anymore. And that's just fine. I mean, it's just meant to be a plan. It's not, it's not, it's not one of the Ten Commandments, right? Mm -hmm. What, what did we adopt when we when we looked at this earlier and we said only the only on this side of the lake that the designated right. growth area yeah and I guess this this implements a designated growth area that's three times what we wanted and I guess that's my concern I mean what is this what does this mean does this mean that in these areas that you have identified here as residential, I mean, does that mean that the lot sizes are getting, I mean, what does that mean for the growth in this town? Um, does that mean widespread developments can happen in these areas? Not necessarily. Um, it's where if you have an influx of new residents, a surge in construction, that's where it would ideally be directed. But given the projections for Winthrop's population, it's unlikely that you're going to have a, build, a boom in building. Um, again, that's the growth area is more suggestive. There's no regulatory, as you saw with the 2010 future land use plan, half of the growth area wasn't even adopted, the proposed growth area. It doesn't change anything. As far as I know with what you have planned it doesn't change anything as far as minimum lot sizes or anything in that nature. So why couldn't that growth happen now? Why do you have to identify it, I guess? It, that's part of the Growth Management Act to delineate where the town would like to see future growth. One one quick comment. I, we talked about this before, like you're talking about the growth area. And she's saying that it doesn't, it's not regulatory. However, we have talked about looking at the um, zoning ordinance and redoing the zoning ordinance and that growth area and all the suggestions in here are gonna have an impact on that, what we present for the changes to the zoning ordinance. It does, it, 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 it would have an influence on 
uh, regulatory stuff, although it doesn't offset it, correct? Yeah, so it's a consideration. So when when Don works with the planning board to look at, you know, potentially rezoning some spaces, then, you know, they'll can, the, the zoning ordinance is supposed to align with your comprehensive plan. So they'll look to try to ensure that that is happening. And so, I mean, I think one of the things I think that everyone agreed on that that Pat had actually suggested was, you know, there were some pockets of land that were uh, zoned rural that were surrounded by either residential and or commercial and or village and it didn't make sense to have those those pockets that in in, in the middle of town that were uh, zoned as rural and so this is this is a first step to trying to make that land a little bit more available to developers not necessarily for you know single homes because you could build single homes in a rural uh, uh, district, but if you wanted to buy to build, you know, like a, a subdivision of some sort, and so we all know that there's a, a an area of town that's got some, you know, some zoning issues, and I think this is the first step to trying to rectify some of those issues. Pat, do you have a, a, a perspective you want to share? But I guess um, in and and we we've, we've gone through this before in this town. When you're talking about rezoning certain areas. Is it when it's when you're saying subdivisions, are you saying homes? Are you saying, you know, projects that are, you know, multiple units that could potentially be, you know, zoned for a certain designation, I guess. And I guess that's my um, that's my question here. I'm sorry. So part of what I'm sorry. Um, part of what we were trying to do is keep the flavor of the town so we have the rural feeling of the town and still maintain that. So directing the growth in a certain area so we can concentrate houses in areas and still when you're driving around the country, you have the countryside, you have areas that are farmland that are rural with a more expansive road front with more expansive green space, if you will, and putting more houses where we do have sewer and potentially maybe reducing lot sizes in some of those areas or density in some of those areas. So we get houses, more families where the services are. Yeah, so keep in mind right now, our designated growth area essentially follows the path of our water and sewer lines. That was a very conscious decision that you yeah. guys made. Right. And so, uh, I, I, Pat, you can speak to this better than I can, but do you think there are very many developable lots along those that infrastructure that could support uh, an apartment complex? The easiest way to get growth in town is to take our existing homes that we have that are some of our big main street properties and making it so we can have multi units in those. That's the easiest way to get more housing in town. There are lots let's say, to go down Greenwood Avenue and behind Greenwood Terrace, Greenwood Lane, Greenwood, whatever the other one is, um, there's some land there. That we can pipe the sewer up to pretty easily. It's not a big run, so it's not terribly expensive for the developer. But those places in town are really, really minimal. I drove around with Dawn and, we, and Jessica and we looked to see where we can extend that sewer. Really tough. Really, really hard to find. So we're not we don't have many lots that are going to take nine units or even 20 units. Yeah. And, and obviously an apartment complex would have to be in where it would be on public water and sewer. I just want to take a moment real quick just to acknowledge the work that has gone into this. This is something that was taken from the 2010 Comprehensive Plan and lots and lots and months and hours have gone into this. And um, aside from, you know, Jessica Cobb and the hard work uh, from Ken Beck Valley Council of Cobb uh, governments, uh, we've also had the Winthrop Comprehensive Planning Committee. So co-chairs uh, Pat Savory and Ted Hatch, uh, Scott Ferguson, Penny Cray. Kristen Shumway and also uh, Pat Ladd over there as uh, she's standing up at the uh, podium. Uh, we also had a resident, Stephen McDermott, who offered uh, a lot of 
uh, input regarding chapters that address housing and future land use, especially. Uh, I know that this was something that I first attended when I moved back to Winthrop uh, and two years ago, uh, two summers ago, and kind of actually got me involved in the town council. Uh, so that says anything to how much time and effort has actually gone into this comprehensive plan. Uh, it's interesting to start some this out. We're still going over grammatical errors, size changes, um, but we have gotten a lot of additional suggested edits in the conference plan and so I do want to thank you for that and thank you for all the time and dedication that you have in that. Um, there was one other uh, there was one other paragraph that was brought to my attention that we may consider revising uh, in this and it's just on page 28 of the comprehensive plan and it was basically I think a general statement a blanket statement uh, as far as the boomer generation um is the way that it reads is that it comes off uh, that they are um, more as well on our community uh being a large generation uh, but you know the contributions of that generation are far uh, I mean very vast <laughs> So maybe uh, schools that have been developed as well as um, the contributions with the Amber that's come up there and some other contributions for it now. So I think that that's uh, important to recognize uh, as one of the paragraphs in this maybe revising that before it gets submitted to the state. Um, and then uh, other than that, I really am grateful for also seeing the, um, the other three policies, recommended policies and changes and things with the implementation committee. Uh, I think that it's super, I think that it's very important. Uh, I know that a plan can continuously progress and change and until it's perfect, but I don't think anything's ever gonna be perfect. You can always sit there and find a period out of place or some kind of error. Uh, but I think that it's important to move ahead. So given a couple of those uh, changes that have been uh, noted, those amendments, uh, I think it's important as it's noted in this memorandum too, that it sets the stage for state consideration and then updating those other documents such as zoning ordinances. And like you were talking about the land use, I think that's important. Um, and then also uh, creating a standing committee to hold us accountable. I think that's super important. If we want to so focus on our vision and where we want to go, we have to sit there and put that into place. So I, I think that this is great with a couple of still minor changes, but those are minor. Just a point there. I would just like I would just like to make sure that you know give the the any of the comprehensive plan committee a chance to um you know if they have any input or if they'd like to uh give us any words or anything about how they feel about the plan or anything like that. If any of you guys have the are inclined to stand up so and can we, can we all set? Can we all right. Not to be terribly specific, um, page 184, the second paragraph, upper narrows pond to store some public water supplies and such should be preserved and protected. The last next sentence is a little throwaway and I think should maybe rewritten to be a little more specific. Some of the other lakes and ponds throughout town also serve as private household water supplies and thus protected. Just add three words. It's not a big one, but we talked about protecting our lakes. Yeah, and save the lakes. So just one thought. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank Shane making sure that any page documented that it's addressed. There are a couple of critical ones in there that are out of errors. There's a cemetery that's not on the right road and it's on Turkey Lane. It really is not on Narrows Point Road. There's some things that need to be corrected. There's a couple of great concerns. Um, but what I'll do is follow up via email about those high points that concern me the most via email, right? Thank you very much. Yeah, Patricia. Sorry, to syndicate, I think. Um, page 190, I'm going to email these to justify. The fourth paragraph down, last sentence, the town should update the zoning ordinance to be clearer and include the latest standards and legislation and to conform with comprehensive plan. A few simple words to add. I think that would be kind of tied together. Thank you very much. I 
Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, and I'm not hard on this subject, uh, Pat, but you just said the town should update the zoning ordinance to conform to the comprehensive plan, I believe. Okay. The comprehensive plan is not a zoning ordinance. Yeah. Okay, that's that's a non-starter for me. Yes, okay. that's, that's a non-starter non for me. The town will update their comprehensive plan and then they'll revisit their zoning regulation or ordinance to make sure the two are cohesive and are in. There's no conflicts between the two. It's it, that's far too close to. Uh, insinuating that the comprehensive plan is an ordinance. The comprehensive plan cannot be a guideline for our, for our um, zoning ordinance or used in any way as an ordinance or its enforcement. In short, though, your ordinance, your zoning ordinance does need to be updated. There are areas in it that, that need to be rewritten and refreshed to be um, most up to date. I'm not arguing that the ordinance may not need to be updated. Okay. Um, what I'm arguing is that the company's plan should not be uh, a guideline for updating the ordinance. People should not be able to sit there and say, it says this in the comprehensive plan, so it decides to say this in the ordinance, and that's just plain wrong. Yeah. But, but, but to be clear, it's not mandatory. It's Yeah, it's not yeah. mandatory. And well, so, and so if the there's... The recent statement on the podium said, sounded awful mandatory to me. There's yeah. no statute authority given. Yeah. And, 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 and so it's, it is important to keep in mind that there's a process for updating a land use ordinance. And that process is, first of all, the planning board makes a recommendation to you guys. And then you guys are the final word after listening to the public as to whether or not to adopt the proposed change. So, um, so as Aaron just said, you know, let, let's not confuse the fact that if it's in a comprehensive plan, it then becomes the law of the land. It doesn't. I, I think what you're saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, is you just didn't like the part of the sentence that Pat proposed. Is that accurate? Yeah. If, if I quoted Pat or heard Pat properly, and I don't always hear things properly, I understand. <laughs> um, she was suggesting that when we work on the zoning ordinance, we should, um, the comprehensive plan will dictate what kind of an ordinance we have. Well, the part and of the system just, doesn't necessarily have to be included. I mean, if that makes you uncomfortable, that is not necessary. I mean, here's my here's my my deal with this. If you're looking at the comprehensive plan we adopt this time, you've got growth areas of roughly a third more of what we have right now. And if you if we're, appointing a committee to look at that, you've got enormous growth potential here in this town. And I guess people have to understand that with enormous growth potential, there comes increased services, increased taxes, increased schools. The school's not going to be enough. It, it's 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 gonna it, at this point, and I'm I'm not I'm I'm with Andy on this about the um you know adopting this and saying, well, our ordinance should, should, should reflect this because people have to understand if you're adopting this comprehensive plan, you are adopting a huge growth spurt for the town of Winthrop. And with that comes an enormous cost. So I guess, you know, I'm okay with looking at this and looking at obviously some ordinances in the town here. But what I'm not okay with is saying, we have to move to this and we're going to be progressing and we're going to charge that committee with doing just that because I'm just not in favor of, of that much growth here in town. Um, I, I, again, I like open space I, and I understand the housing and I'm in favor of some, but I'm not in favor of saying we have to go and increase the taxable base of this, of, of Winthrop by a third because we have to, you know, of, of the comprehensive plan. I'm just not in favor of that. So. Again, I'm in favor of some growth, but not to this extent, I guess. Okay, uh, just a little bit of rebuttal. I guess, so there's two things going on here. One is, you know, the comprehensive plan is kind of, we hope, if and what you could do, if you could get everything you want, we're not going to. So the, um, the market is gonna probably be more of a factor limiting any construction projects or whatnot, but we do know 
that there is a, an absolute housing crisis uh, and Winthrop is not immune to this. So if we want to be able to provide long-term housing, let's say someone wants to age in, in place, mm -hmm. we no longer have any nursing homes nearby. So I would assume that this may be a reality for a lot of folks um, that, you know, if we do age in place friendly, that might mean a family moving out of a raised ranch or somewhere has to go upstairs, downstairs each time into houses that are more um, thought out or uh, appeasable to someone who's uh, limited mobility. So I think we have to think about that. But I think the concern for the, the, the complete, you know, explosion of uh, development would be limited just by the, the market factor, period. But I do, I don't want to see kind of what we've seen in the past where there were projects that were legitimately um, considered and work had been done, but then, you know, the zoning uh, was not in line with where they wanted to develop. So I do think it is a <clears throat> role for the companies to plan to basically say, you know, this is the direction we want to go in, but it's not going to necessarily happen um, in the way that that we might be afraid of. But and then also you have to remember, we also get a tax base increase when we have people coming to. So it kind of you get a tax base increase, but I, I can tell you, I can assure you that your schools aren't going to have the capacities and that's double what we, it's triple what we paid 10 years ago or 20 years ago for that. And all the services go up. It never goes down your taxes. I, I, I just, I disagree with that I because agree. my taxes have tripled yes. in eight years. Yeah. They've tripled. So well, it is what it is. But I, I, again, I'm not in favor. I'm, I'm in favor of housing. I, I know there's a high housing crisis. And I'm not in favor of no growth, but what I am in, not in favor of is adopting the or the ordinances to necessarily reflect all of this. Yeah, no, I, I think we have to take so take that in piecemeal one and one step at a time. But I don't I, I don't agree. We have to conform the ordinances to this comprehensive plan. Right, and, and that would be the process, right? When we go into those discussions and then approve the uh, zoning uh, changes. Uh, when they come forward. So that would definitely be, I think, the time to have that discussion. I think the comprehensive plan in, in of itself can be seen as something that is an over, like overly large realistic um, thing that, you know, we don't typically get to respect people get to you know, attend one, but it gives us the ability to make the changes that we need to make and kind of steer development in the way that we know that it will best fit the town. So like right now, I don't see, you know, certain seniors really need housing. And so, you know, they're not gonna necessarily be bringing people to school, but they will contribute to the tax base. Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, I, I agree with you. I just think that we would have to take it one thing at a time as it comes from the planning. I'm in total agreement of that. And I believe that this is considered to be a vision, not to be an ordinance. Ordinances will get, come back to the council and we'll approve them then and there. Yeah. Same thing with the uh, planning board uh, approvals. Uh, so this right now, I believe this is set to be our vision. It's our guiding principles and the direction that we want to take our town. Uh, and that's what we are currently looking at. Is that a question? Okay. Yeah, I have a question. Okay. So where do we go from here? I have a question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? Oh. You have a question? Okay. Oh yeah, I sure do. Um, I, I'm a little surprised, and I have been told that our, our new digital maps are complete. The, the zoning maps, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little surprised that, you know, as a council and our citizens are, are looking at this small map. If those maps are complete, there's no real good reason why we couldn't have a full-size digital map on the screen up there. But That's this is kind of... Well, that's yeah. on me. I put it together for the PowerPoint, and this was off of a PDF that my boss, who does all our GIS work, created. You're right. I should have made a larger map. To I didn't need to point. correct you, ma'am. I'm sorry. Take it that way. No, no, Just, you're, you're right. That's a good. It's good advice. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, and I and I wanted to know. Well, I could. I looked on the town website. And I couldn't find a digital zoning map. So I don't think it's been posted yet because we are still waiting to have one more overlay on that. Is that right, Don? That's correct. So Joel is working on that mapping, and you may be aware that he changed his position at KBCon recently. So he's straddling two positions, but he's working hard to get us 
the final maps, and he is adding the water and sewer layer for us onto that map, which we don't currently have. And he is connecting, working to connect our assessing database information. So when you click on a parcel, you get the information about the parcel. Um, is it on water and sewer? Who owns it? You know, the history. It will take you to what you see in a tax card. And that's immensely helpful moving forward as you want to do queries. So once he does that, the planning board wants to quality check it um, again before it goes to the council. So it's very close. It exists, but not to the public yet. Yeah, and, and so she mentioned Andy is going to leverage our tax map and our zone map into one, one document. And, and in fact, the, the zone that she mentioned is the same one that Steve mentioned a little while ago, the, the groundwater district. Would there be a layer for that just to show where that exists? Thank you, everyone. Sorry, I, I really wasn't taking a shot at you. It's okay. It's Constructive criticism. Yes. So, so where do we go from here? Because we want to get this thing adopted so that we can send it to the state and have them adopt it and start uh, trying to handle I would like to see the amendments and everything that we're talking about get talked about. Prior to? Thank you. How about that? For the state, they wanted us to. So, how about sending those amendments? No. The emergency no. water area. Okay. State wanted us to designate something. I'd like to uh, propose a motion uh, uh, we could get the, be updated before we could get the um, sewer. Um, Winthrop County, the town of Winthrop comprehensive plan pending noted errors and had additions from Pat Ladd and a paragraph revision on page 28. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the update to the town winter comprehensive plan and then go with noted errors, the additions of Pat Lott and a paragraph revision on page 28. All in favor? I'd like to see All opposed? Yeah, I'd like to see. I want to see it. Okay. Motion fails. <laughs> Okay, so, so you guys want us to bring that back at the next yep. meeting? Yep. Okay. I'd really like to see, you know, uh, uh, 24 by 48 map. Okay, with everything you have, there's some pieces left out, that's okay. But there's no reason we can't see that map and those copies. layers up on that screen. Don't you have copies of most of it? I, I see it to you, I see it to you guys, I think, multiple times. No, no, I'm it's talking. Cardboard copies. Don't go. Oh no, I'd have to go to Staples or some such to get something like that. From it, but, but we could. Anthony, I can print that. I was going to say. Oh yeah, yeah, I forgot. I forgot. I... Yeah. We'll we'll come and get it from you, Jessica. If you can. I forgot that they have a giant printer at KB Cog. But it, how many it... copies do you want? Just one of each, we can see it. It's something we should have on hand here. Anyway. When you say one of each, what do you like, mean? One of each one of those overlays would be. Yeah. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Really, yeah, don't, you, have, utilities. you have like a whole pile of maps in this catalog thing you just gave us, right? I have the 2010 map and the 2020. No, yeah, but you could pull each one of these in the in the information you sent us earlier. But there's a whole series of maps, right? Or am I looking at the planets? Am I thinking of the planet? Yeah, plan? yeah. in the plan itself, there's yes. 12 plan maps. Yes, just this overlay we can kind of look at. Right. Yeah. All this stuff here is part of that mapping, correct? Yes. You want a 24 by 48 of each of those? I think you'd want them on hand anyway, wouldn't you? Don't you have them on hand? That would buy your Can you make them bigger? No. no. Just there's, make there's one out there, but not. We have the old ones on hand. Okay. Jessica said she'll take care okay. of that. I'll do them tomorrow. But just to clarify, Roy, when the for the next meeting, you want to have this back on the agenda to discuss to go over the land use and the amendments and amendments. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, would it be too busy if you put all those layers? If you just one map? Yes. Thank you. 
I would just like to um, reiterate that the planning board has been anxiously waiting to look at this and they're hoping to look at it on the 8th of their regular meeting. Um, and Joel can provide for that. So they have not officially done their last quality control check and they are anxious to do that and get it to you. So it sounds like maybe these are going to happen concurrently. Thank you. All right. We'll make note of that. All right. We move on to item 54 recognition of the Spirit of America Award. And so I'm just going to open up and have a quick discussion. Do we have those out here, Anthony? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so, what is the Spirit of America Award? Thank you very much to the Comprehensive thank Planning you. Committee for yes, coming. All right, what is the Spirit of America Award? It's an award presented, thank you very much, to local individuals, organizations, and projects for commendable service and contributions to the community. Uh, anyone can submit a nomination. Typically, town uh, select boards or councils will select uh, and present the award to recipients. Uh, the Spirit of America Foundation is a nonprofit 501c3 public charity established in Augusta, Maine uh, in 1990 to honor volunteerism. And so given that April is the month of volunteer, uh, the National Volunteer Month, uh, we'd like to take the opportunity to recognize two of our dedicated community members. Uh, first off, I will sit there and just read. Uh, as you may have noticed, one of them uh, in a previous agenda item, Stephen McDermott, uh, he was listed as someone who offered keen input in the chapters that address housing and future land use especially. He also stood up and discussed the incorporation of language regarding mapped aquifers in the mineral extraction ordinance. Two years ago, I met Steve at the Comprehensive Planning Committee meeting, and he expressed his interest on in the housing continuum, continuum in Winthrop and a concern for affordable housing. He quickly became a resource for the Comprehensive Planning Committee, but he didn't stop there. He provided valuable insight and recommendations on navigating state-mandated amendments to our zoning ordinance. He presented the Community Resilience Project Grant as an opportunity for our town to seek funds for climate-related projects, of which we are now pursuing heat pumps and LED upgrades for municipal buildings. He also met with town managers from Winthrop, Reedfield, and Manchester to discuss the housing opportunity group. Today, we'd like to thank Steve for dedicating his time and knowledge to educate, present, and share his expertise with municipal staff, counselors, committees, and working towards improving the housing options in Winthrop. So thank you very much. Everyone's already seen Steve. Thank you. Oh, it is. <laughs> that's 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 Mm -hmm. We also have a second nom uh, nomination and recipient here, Pat Lowe. She cares about housing and women. A member of the town's comprehensive planning committee and a longtime real estate agent, Pat has in recent years championed moves that could result in more affordable workforce and senior housing opportunities in our community. Winthrop's landscape is dominated by large farmhouses and Victoria homes, residences that don't fit the finances or lifestyles of most of the towns of modern day residents. Pat worked tirelessly on the housing and future land use chapter of the comprehensive plan update to ensure Winthrop's municipal government is focused on facilitating housing opportunities that would benefit seniors who wish to age in place, young couples, the working class and professionals at the onset of their careers. Her vision was enlightened, has enlightened some of us in municipal government to new housing opportunities, including, including tiny developments that include modular and mobile homes. Her support helped politically buoy an ordinance change to allow accessory dwelling units. Throughout her advocacy, she has remained constructive, upbeat, and encouraging, which has instilled the trust in her in the ear of elected and appointed town officials. She has also followed through with her action. Her real estate firm bid a real estate firm bid on the contract to sell tax acquired properties, seeing that as an opportunity to assist in repurposing properties and homes 
It feels like momentum is building to address the local housing crunch in a meaningful way in the group. And Pat Ladd has been at the forefront of that change. So tonight we want to also thank you, Pat. Lad. <laughs> Thank you very much to Steve and the dedication board. Moving on to item 55. Discussion and consideration of Resolution 2024-001, reallocating tennis court reserve funds to build a new fence at the baseball field and state park and tennis court reserve funds rebuilt the breach boardwalk to rebuild the beach boardwalk. So uh, let me set the stage here for, for Lonnie and he can answer any questions that you may have. And this is completely his idea. A, I think it's a great idea to address two meaningful recreation projects in our community uh, with funds that we already have in place. So we have a reserve account for tennis courts and that account currently has a balance of about $49,000. So what Lonnie is proposing is that a portion of those funds be used to build a fence around a new ball field that will sit between the tennis courts and the turf field. So there used to be a ball field down there, but it had to be removed in order to accommodate the new uh, Astro turf field. Additionally, we have an account with nearly $4,400 in it uh, for a skate park. So what his idea was, we would take that money dedicated to improving the boardwalk, which we estimate the cost of that will be about $15,000. And then the balance of that project would also be paid from these, this uh, tennis court reserve. Now, the, the genius of this idea is that you'd be cash funding two capital projects that would then allow you to remove that $15,000 cost from our CIP this year, just reducing the, the, the budget by that amount. So, Lonnie, have I missed anything? That's exactly what I thought for. Well, I was here for the did the capital improvement budget, and I walked out and we've got about $49,000 left from our tennis court project. We have one piece left, and I'm hoping it's going to happen in the next two or three days of putting the baskets up on the basketball court. Once that is done, we will we will be done with the expenses on that. We will end up with probably around $40,000 left in that account. Um, the rebuild of Maxwell Field. Um, is happening soon. Again, uh, paving today kept uh, sports fields from doing the work that they were going to do today to rebuild that. And I have a fence guy coming in um, by the end of this week to put up a new backstop and uh, safety fencing around that ball field. So we'll have a, a really nice little ball field down there, which will be renamed as Maxwell Field. And then using the remainder of that money to, to do the boardwalk project, which we talked about back at the, uh, the, at the um, capital improvements night. So I just thought if we can take $15,000 out of the budget, which I know isn't a lot of money, but you know, I, I was just thinking any little bit helps. And um, we were, we've been really lucky with that. Uh, we started the project with $300,000 uh, to rebuild the tennis courts. And uh, by some good help from, from some good vendors, uh, we've been able to, to keep that number as low as possible. And here we are at the end of the project uh, with some money left. And I, you know, when we initially did that, and I think Linda's, Linda and Andy are probably the only two that were on the com committee back when we first started about this project. You know, um, it's been almost six years since we began the project and then COVID hit and all kinds of stuff happened. Uh, but here we are near the end of it and we have the opportunity to do a little bit more to make the community a little bit better um, and upgrade our recreational assets and um, by using no real new tax money and just using money that we've got sitting in an account already. So that's the idea. Okay. I, I, no one's had a chance yet to jump up and um, say that we shouldn't be spending the skateboard money, but uh, and maybe no one will, but I'd like to preclude any comments for that thought that 
for years, I, well, I was a town council rep for the rec committee, uh, and Lonnie is part of the rec committee. And we struggled with vandalism, um, repairing those things, and then having them ripped apart. Kids down there that attracted kids down there at night and then would proceed to go over and tear up the basketball nets and the tennis courts. And we finally uh, made the decision to haul in things over to the dump. And I don't know what that ever did with them. But the idea of rebuilding the skate park and starting that all over again is a non starter for me. Uh, we even no. tried to find some young people. No, that's Amy. That's not. That's not. I, I know. I'm trying to support you on okay. spending that money. <laughs> okay. uh, we tried to attract young people to help us make the repairs, and we finally decided to give up on the whole thing. And I think that's the way uh, it should stay. And I think Lonnie had a good idea of taking that money, spending it on this. I I have a question. I was just wondering the funding to clean the track that goes around. Uh, is that included in that budget, or is that separate? Separate. Yeah, separate. That's separate, but not do, we know, do we know the status of that? That's a not town funded project. Yeah, that's a privately funded project. The, the school. Okay. So got it. But we can reach out and get up there. Joel, so I'm going to be the first to get contact. Another, just another question. I lived down by North Cross Point, and for many years we had a flag that would that would be up and down, and I can kind of got uh, talking about it, and I heard the reason why it hasn't been up for about two years is because of lighting. I was wondering if there was any money in the budget to put some light to move that the flag back at the first point. Well, that's actually not part of this, um, what we're looking at for this item on the agenda, uh, but we can reserve that to public comment at the end. Okay, um, sorry, and I just got, I got you a little late. Appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Linda. Thank you. I'd like to make a motion that we approve um, reallocating the tennis court reserve funds to build a new fence at the baseball field, a skate park, and tennis court reserves for the beach walk as well. Second. A second, but I have one quick question for Lonnie before we vote. Can I do that? Go ahead. Lonnie, uh, I noticed during that. Heavy rains, we had some damage to the fields. Mm -hmm. Have we done anything to make sure that this is not I've been happen told that the deconstruction is going to come in and put a storm drain down right where that came off so that it can get down into the storm drain. Good. So it won't happen again. Right. Yeah, I don't trust them. We don't want it up. Oh, we want to put all this money in the pocket. No, 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 it's, 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 it out. It looks terrible. Mm -hmm. That's a very obvious. Robert thing. Richardson, when Robert got done with the original, they completely finished Maxwell Field last fall. Yeah, it was all done. I had received it. Everything was done. And uh, Robert was so proud of how it was going to drain. I mean, that field was going to drain beautifully. And then we get that mark in the rainstorm. And it proved how good the drainage was because our entire infield went right down over the hill. Along so, with, uh, apparently, like Joel said, a couple of the bases. Yeah, a couple of bases. Yeah. And then the wind, <laughs> the wind got the dugouts. And so yeah. we got that. So. It's all ready to go, and and hopefully uh, May fourth, uh, we're going to rededicate Maxwell Field and, and have a and uh, get things going again, so kids have a place to play ball. Are they going to go to play on it this year? That's the plan. If we're not, I just spent four days building baseball schedules. It's going to be a waste of time. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So the plan is, yeah, uh, Bob Bouzier is coming in to do the fence. Uh, sports fields is going to be in by the end of the week to redo the field, and so we should be good to go. Mom, you did say there was money to put up for the back porch, right? Yes. Yeah, kids climbing. Oh God. Says, they've been in my they've been in my garage since uh October. All right. Just want to make sure it's now, installed. We were it was supposed to go up Monday or Tuesday of last week. The steel didn't come in to McGee. The steel is supposed to come in today or tomorrow. And as soon as they get it, they're coming to do it. But right now we've got a paving project going on down there that may get in the way for a couple so, of days. Yeah, so thanks. It's coming. Appreciate it. Okay, I just want to reiterate what you just said, May 4th, the rededication of Maxwell Field. Thank yep. you. So we have a motion and we have a second. All in favor? All are in favor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lonnie. Thank you, Lonnie. Good plot, Lonnie. Good skin. Huh? Good plot. I mean, that all work. Yeah. You know.
Moving on to item 56, consideration of resolution 2024-002, appropriating $100,000 from the assigned fund balance for capital reserves to the capital reserve account for a townwide property evaluation. Yeah, so this is just formalizing the uh, consensus that was at the uh, uh, among you though, when we talked about this as part of our first budget workshop. I move to approve appropriating one hundred thousand dollars for the assigned fund balance from capital reserves to capital reserve account for a townwide property evaluation. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? All are in favor? Thank you. Moving on to item 57. I thought we did that. We did that one. Yeah. No, 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 we haven't acted on that. Great. Consideration of recommendation from the appointments committee from Richard's authority. Planning. I would like I would like to uh, recommend reappointing Richard Dory to the planning board. Uh, Associate, yeah. okay, from associate form of full member, second with a term expiring 12 31 29. Any motion? Any second? All in favor? All in favor? All right, thank you. We will move on to other business. So, public comment. Do we have any other additional? Would like to start? Yeah. Hi, uh, my name's Alan. Most of you know me. Um, I I live very close proximity to North Cross Point, and there has been a flag there for at least 10 of the 13 years that I've lived there. I've noticed it hasn't been there, and I was wondering what the status of the flag at North Cross Point is. So uh, what I've been told, Alan, is that... Uh, Oh, is that the apparatus on the top of that flagpole has been broken. And so all we need is some dry ground so we can pull a, a heavy truck in there in order to get up to the top of that flagpole and fix it. So as soon as the ground dries out enough that we can you know, get a bucket truck in there, then we will we'll fix that, uh, that apparatus and get the flags back up. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I have one quick question. I, I know that the lines originally put that up, Anthony. So at this point, uh, are we relying on the lines to do that, or is the town going to just go ahead and get it done? My understanding was the town's been servicing that that flagpole. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's a minor cost yes, if, if there is a cost. Yes, yep. Yeah. Uh, is it possible if we? <laughs> So we don't go another year without it. Uh, if we continue to have wet weather, can we rent one of those little wagon uh, uh, tow behind uh, bucket trucks that don't weigh anything and do it that way and just get it done? They know what dealers the talent. That's what we equip it. Man, just a I just get that out of the big boy. Yeah. <laughs> 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 So, oh, bad day. So, sorry. Sorry. Anyway, anyway. So yes, we'll 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 get it. We'll get a flag up there by hook or by crook. All right. Thank you. Big fellow. Big fellow. Big fellow. Anything else? We'll move on to the town manager's report. All right, so I think I emailed you folks about this a few weeks ago, but uh, you know we had the uh, engineer go out and look at the drainage around Spruce Street and so forth, and he came up with some pretty simple solutions that we think we can mostly do uh, in house. Or you know I want to, and I have the public works director working on plans for how we're going to get that work done. Uh, I thought there were two ways we could go about it. We could either just alert everybody by letter and say if they have questions comments, concerns, input to, you know, call me, or we could try to schedule something for a council meeting and have a discussion. Do you guys have a, a preference as to how that's handled? Yeah. 
an alert. I would think yeah. if we have a plan and you know the plan is what it is, I think we just should alert them and all right. I'm gonna go with the letter then and we'll yep. uh, move forward. So yeah, I, I would say I mean I was up there and what needs to be done is very straightforward. And the so, town's perfectly capable of getting it done without putting like equipment in that we just you know, move on, move ahead with it. So this next thing I'm about to say is the most probably the most painful confession I've had to make in one of these meetings. Andy was right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a painful confession. And, and Linda feels my pain. <laughs> so so, at, <laughs> so as it turns out, our $200,000 project for the elevator included the cost of the architect, which is going to be $24,000, which leaves us $4,000 short, even with the contingency. So I just uh, stop smiling. Andy. <laughs> so, so, so anyway, so I just wanted to give you a, a heads up that we may have to come back to you at some point seeking some more appropriations in order to to make that project happen. But but the good thing is we've still got ARPA funds available and we've still got that 988, now it's $888,000 in our uh, uh, unassigned capital reserves that we could that we could use towards that project. ARPA funds. Okay. Um, today, I said- Lucky that, for you, I'm not the type that's bloats and is happy about I it. Think oh, yeah. what you're, I think that's what you're doing right now. <laughs> so uh, earlier today, I submitted uh, applications uh, for federal funding to Senator King and Senator Collins' office. I, mean, I think I mentioned you folks went to town energy training not too long ago and learned about federal earmarks. So uh, with the help of uh, our police chief, I submitted uh, an application to each of those offices for up to 55% of the funding for our radio communications upgrade. That's the maximum amount we could get. Um, I had conversations with those staffs and with the uh, representative Golden staff, their application's not out yet. And they were all uh, encouraging about the prospects of that. So keep your fingers crossed, hopefully we can, uh, we can get some federal money for that project. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, Town Hall Lane is being uh, paid, the, the finishing up of that project. So that should be done uh, sometime this week. Um, so we had a mooring committee meeting um, last week and there was some, and we got down to the end of it. And all of a sudden there was this discussion about uh, whether or not we should grandfather the existing moorings on the South Cove of Moranicook Lake. And it turned into sort of uh, a discussion of two different opinions. One is that, yes, we should do that. Those folks have been there. They, their mornings were placed there at a time when obviously that's legal, it still is. Um, and we need, and the reason for that, for the whole effort of coming up with a mooring field ordinance, that was the genesis of it. So we need to sort of recognize that and, and honor those people who have been there for a while. There was also a school of thought that the mooring field ordinance when you see it, it basically creates a process for creating a mooring field and that no one should be exempt from that and that even that field should come to the town council. The town council will be the one determining whether or not the mooring field gets approved, but that that should come to the town council for your consideration. And there was there were some committee members who felt like without that, you would be usurping the, count, uh, the council's uh, authority. Uh, and so there was some a lot of discussion back and forth. And so I figured, well, the best way to maybe figure out how we should move forward with this is just to take your temperature and see whether or not grandfathering those existing moorings, do you feel like that's appropriate or do you feel like it would be uh, some sort of usurping of your authority to actually approve uh, a mooring field? I, okay. Uh, you want to go ahead? I think it was originally intended when we formed the mooring committee that we had seven members. Uh, is there a chair for the mooring committee? No, there's not. They decided that they, they wanted to operate without a chair, and I'm, I'm just sort of serving as a I would throw this back as a vote for the mooring committee, whether they want to accept or reject. Um, you have a majority of people that, you know, they 
you, you have a vote. And then my understanding was also, I attended the first meeting. Um, I haven't subsequently gone to any other of the other ones, although I've watched them online. Um, but they should be able to resolve this within the mooring committee, have a vote um, and make a decision on their own. Uh, so they can bring it back to town council for approval. All right. All right. Then, okay. Two things. Okay. One is I have stayed, and everyone knows this, one hundred percent out of this morning committee thing. Okay. For fairly obvious reasons, I see the big smile on that there. Okay. That during the process when I was involved, um, I learned that. We were going to have to be very careful if if the morning committee should decide to grandfather the existing morning field. We'd have to be very careful about assigning mornings to specific people. The town attorney said that probably wouldn't work. We'd have to find another way to do it. The other thing is, so before we go that route, you want to talk to the town attorney. That's all you can say. And if we if you, if they decide to go that route. The other thing is, I only did one quick review of the ordinance. And back when I did that, several months back, uh, it appeared as though um, it was that survey you took where you, of all the different opinions, there was three or four opinions. Do you remember that, Jim? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it seemed like the lakefront property owners were not in favor of regulating the ordinance. And one thing that it, I thought, um, they might want to be aware of is it, uh, clearly, you know, the sentiment is you can't tell me where I can put my boat in front of the property, but they need to remember that we can't tell anyone else where they can put their boat in front of the property either. Okay, that's something for the morning to think about. You know, the old one said something like 50 feet for a boat, and it had to be the property owner, and the way it is. You know, with no one, and any Bob Smith could put his boat in the lake and drive it over there and throw a morning in front of the property the way it stands now. So that's just another thought, another aspect that they may not have thought of. That's it, no matter. So I'm involved in it. It's just full disclosure. I mean, I had them go through the whole process of this whole thing. Um, and take is on it is. This, I mean, when I was there or not, it's, it, I feel as though grandfathering folks that were there because their mortgage are placed legally as they have to be put. And I just want everybody to listen and consider this. Um, not to exempt them from following the ordinance, because they will follow the ordinance, but the more field ordinance is in place. It's mostly saying you don't have to apply because we're already pre existing, we're there. And it doesn't have to have us run up here to make an application to get approved is what already existing. So it's just saying we we acknowledge you there, we acknowledge that your, your votes are there legally, and we're gonna have you follow the ordinance, the morning ordinance, uh field ordinance in place, uh according to the guidelines. And then there would be uh was it the harbor manager would be the one to enforce that and making sure the inspector that that's that's done. But um, this place for uh, other people to apply, be there if they want to. But I just feel as if it's fair for these folks, who me being one of them, uh, they had been here without incident for all these years. Um, I think if you get a good group of people on the morning committee that are considering it and putting this all together, but I really think that that group should be grandfathered. So that's all I really want to say about that. Okay, I my little hey, my, you said you were done. My comments, I just want to tell you, my comments were just cautions based on some of the mud puddles I stepped in. Okay, yeah, that that's all. It no, wasn't I, meant to steer anybody in any no, direction. I, I didn't think that way. And the I know, and the last thing is, I, I agree with Bruce that we probably shouldn't even be having this conversation. That we thought the committee was going to bring this to us has failed. Okay. Not that I don't, I mind talking to you, Jim. I, <laughs> yeah. um, I would give, you know, kind of some advice to the committee and board committee is either adopt some form of acknowledgement of existing 
moorings in place now and address that within the ordinance. And um, if not, then you have to follow the ordinance um, regardless. And because right now, um, you know, we don't have any mooring fields, correct? Right. There's a process for that to happen. Right. That process will still have to happen. Yeah. Um, but uh, I would say if you do want to keep in, and it is a decision the, com the committee should be making, um, but just address it within uh, the top saying, you know, as of anyone can want it. That way it's not, it has to be. I think it's going to come back now. Yes, I will also agree with Bruce in the sense that I feel like the Mooring Committee should come to us with a TA or nay decision. I do have one question for the Mooring Committee as far as uh, for the criteria for establishing a mooring field. Are they working on like an appendix with um, like a checklist of whether it goes to the Friends of the Coffee Watershed for review for milk oil or any other locations or things, considerations? Yeah, I, I kind of feel like that's part of the application process as opposed to, opposed to the ordinance. Uh, and I actually think we've got a really good and strong ordinance that has been reviewed, has been reviewed by the town's yes. attorney. Yeah. It's just this one sticking. It's just this one sticking point. But 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 I I I agree with Bruce's approach. You know, we'll, we'll let the committee decide that, and and then and then they make it voted. You know, grandfathering may get voted X against X, and we'll we'll bring you know we'll bring those results to you guys. And yes. So just two other quick things. Uh, our next two meetings uh, a week from tonight. We'll be meeting at six p.m. Uh, to discuss more budget items. So make sure that's on your calendar. What day? The 29th. And then the following Monday, so we get to meet three Mondays in a row, uh, we will come back for our regular meeting also at 6 p.m. Because you guys, you know, we agreed at the last meeting to change all the meetings to 6 p.m. to make them uh, hopefully get done at a decent hour. Um, and on that agenda thus far, we have the second reading of the mineral extraction ordinance that we discussed tonight but also, uh, and then we'll have the comp plan, but also uh, further discussion about the ZISC house. So they sent us all the materials that were sent to the state as part of their application that's been forwarded to you. So, you know, if you haven't um, checked those out, if you, if you haven't yet checked those out and you want to participate in that conversation, I'd encourage you to spend a little time with that email. Yeah. One other thing I had wrote down here, you didn't get an update, I was waiting to see if you said anything about the revitalization or grant that we just signed up for the heat pumps. Yes, Efficiency Maine has been signing off on those left and right. So, Mike, do we have all of them now that have been approved? Town Hall in the last day. Yeah, so, so, so we've got the approval for all of them from Efficiency Maine except for Town Hall. So. And we did get the grant with money according to what we applied for. We could have that $50,000. It's like a resilience. Yes. Good. Yes. Yes. Thanks. Um, how many more budget meetings do we have scheduled? Yeah, we, yeah. we we need to we need to kind of have budget meetings where we can talk about the budget itself. And I'm I'm just getting concerned at yeah, this. I, I sent a schedule out uh previously. I know we have one on the 29th. I think we have another one on May 13th. Um I mean I think we're gonna have question. Maybe we'll just we're probably going to need more than that, I would think. Um, so I think we need to, you know, schedule maybe a couple. Yeah, I mean, I sent the schedule out a couple of months ago. So yeah, I'll resend it. I mean, I think we need to have a couple meetings in May. One meeting is going to cut it. Well, let me send the schedule out. And you got look. I mean, we've got it mapped out as to what we're going to talk about when, and and we would, you know, we approved the budget the first meeting in June last year. That's the that's the plan this year as well. Right, but I think yeah. we one thing we have not done in the last few years is we 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 end with a discussion of the the departments, and we have we used to have a couple meetings where we would discuss. Going through the budget, are there any cuts? Or are there not? And I think we need to do that. I mean, that's really you know prudent of us to, and responsible of us to go through the budget and make sure. So I think you know I don't know if there's one or two scheduled, but we I think we want to schedule a few earlier, so that if we do have you know those types of you know cuts or changes or anything like that, 
we don't get caught running up against the June the deadline. So, so, so just as a reminder, I sent the budget out many weeks ago so that you guys can start looking at that. And we have, I think, like a half dozen or so departments that we're going to talk about next Monday, another half dozen or so the following Monday. So again, I'll, you know, I've, I've sent those materials out and, and I'll resend the, the, the calendar. I'll resend the budget if, if you guys need that. But when do we hear more on the school budget? Um, I don't know that there will be much to, more to hear about the school budget. What do you? Just, well, I know that he said that he had, he had some changes that he could could make or was planning on. Yeah, well, I, I'll talk to him tomorrow. I mean, I think he was down to six point seven percent, and I, I think he thought that that was probably as good as it was going to get. But I'll I'll double check with him tomorrow. I'm just saying, as you know, you know, you're looking at significant increases again, so you really want to get so that you have two or three, you know, couple meetings here where you're just looking at the budget um, as a whole. As a whole, you can't just look at it in one damn meeting. No, I, I mean, and, and we do, Linda, we have it, we have it broken up over multiple. I mean, the first meeting that we had looked at the CIP program and, and revenues uh, and the school budget in particular. And so, so we do have it broken up. Um, no, I by, get it's by, broken up. I, I think just, a, a one or a couple individual meetings where we're just looking, opening it up, the whole thing. We used to do that. And in recent years, we've just been looking at, you know, running up against that June deadline and, and yeah, everybody's. Right. We made yeah. suggestions. We will, so, Anthony, we'll send a budget schedule and then we will decide right. yes. if there okay. are additional days right. to add so to that, it and we'll discuss that. So okay. Yeah, we'll decide. So, and, and so one thing we are going to do differently uh, this year than, than last year is last year, a lot of it was the budget presentations were operational in nature. And we're not doing that this year. We're talking strictly budget. That is, what was your budget last year? What are your year to date uh, spending this year? And what's the increase uh, that you're looking for in the coming year? And what's driving that increase? And that's going to be the discussion, not... Well, you know, they're, they're going to be itemized, right? What do you mean? Not just what's driving the increase. Like, it's going to be a, a line, line for line budget. Yeah, for yeah. I mean, you guys have received that. I mean, I remember I said that yeah. to you previously, and it's going to yeah, yeah. percentages. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Is that it? Yes. Is there anything else from the no. council? Okay. You like another business? Another business. Do you have anything? Yeah. Else? Did you want to do that? Um, cut off. They're always cut off. Started at six, cut off at nine, set it. Oh, that's something that we'd have to amend, I think. Yeah, the, our, the rules of the council. Rules of, yeah. yeah. I'm fine with the nine o'clock cutoff if we start at six. Yeah, that was my thought. Well, I mean, we started an hour earlier. We put an hour earlier. Is that, that I was the motion? Right, we have to have a motion to extend yeah. it. Yep. Just like how we started at seven, we made a motion yeah. to extend past 10. Do you want to make a motion to extend past nine if we are starting at okay. six? I'll make a motion that we have to uh, vote. That's not what I say. We can't vote on something that's not on the agenda. So, oh, so yeah. But we can just yeah. discuss. We can direct it. Yeah. Then we do a consensus. We'll put it on the agenda if you could for Monday. Yeah, That'd be good. That's not yeah. Good. That's an agenda. I'll we'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All right. All in favor? Motion adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Seven. Oh. Hmm? I'm begging. I know. Get the hell out of my email. <laughs> I'm gonna do that. I swear to God, tomorrow I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Oh, thank you, Shannon. I know. Uh, uh.